Welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast, strategies that help entrepreneurs build reputable and profitable brands. Here's your host, Henry Kaminsky, Jr. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Henry Kaminsky here from UniqueDesigns.net with another Brand Doctor Podcast episode for you guys. Today, I have an amazing guest. He's been a branding on the man client now for close to a year, and we have been working together very closely on building his brand, and he's just been an absolute rock star, and I wanted to get him showcased on the show and sort of just, you know, shoot the shit a little bit with with him in regards to what really is grinding his gears, you know, and, and getting him like getting him fired up inside of his marketplace today. Cause I, I know that there's every entrepreneur has this issue where they want to solve this problem so badly where they'll will, they're willing to do whatever it takes. And, and, and my next guest is one of those guys that will do whatever it takes to help his clients, you know, get to the next level. So without further ado, I want to introduce my man, Jesse Miller from integrity enterprises. What's going on, Jess? What's happening, Henry? Dude, thank you so much for having me here today, man. I love what you're doing. I love the value you create for your clients. And man, it's just incredible to be here, man. Awesome, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time and 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 joining us today. Um, the audience is definitely in for quite the treat. So real quick, I always like to start this, uh, start the conversation off like this is the brand doctor's podcast. So, you know, I'm always curious and I'm sure my audience is curious, like, how did you get integrity enterprises off the ground? Like, can you give us like the real quick three, four minute overview on how you established your your business? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, It was multifaceted pain is really what birthed, uh, what, what birthed integrity enterprises. Uh, My history is about 20 years now of working, owning or working directly with business owners in small business. Uh, And when I say pain, it was things like uh, coming back from your honeymoon and finding out that your job no longer existed and that the the owner kind of thought it was your fault for why you were where you were. And there was no infrastructure, no training, no development in that scenario. And so, you know, it really birthed a passion for me to help business owners solve the issues that create those scenarios for everybody. I mean, you know, people disconnect themselves from the results in their business in in, in many different facets. Uh, They typically think the issues are with other people and not internal or not themselves. And, and so the, you know, the, the resources that I create are working with the business owner to help them engage with the pieces of their business that are going to create a result, that are going to create a profitable, uh, joyful environment for the people that work there. That's awesome. So you know, I want I want to just pause for a second and, and point this out to the audience. You see how see how Jesse created Integrity Enterprises. It came from it came from a very deep passion, and it came from a very deep pain that 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 was inside of him and that's why he's here 20 years later you know to kind of talk about it and to and to still be standing if you will because that's the that's the motivating factor for him it's that passion that drives the brand and i i noticed you know here's one thing that kind of grinds me up a little bit is that you know people are just trying to create businesses because they think maybe entrepreneurship is like a new fad or the cool thing to do. You know, I can tell my buddies I'm a business now, or I can get the girl now because like, you know, when she asks me what I do, I can say I'm an entrepreneur, you know, and and that's all bullshit because that's going to last you about three weeks. And then you're going to see what it really takes to be an entrepreneur and you're going to, and you're going to cave. So Jesse is a perfect example of how a great business, how a great business gets formed and gets started and the purpose behind it, you know, real quick, what, just tell the audience, how did you develop your name integrity enterprises? What's that mean for you? 
Man, it's it's multifaceted. You know, when people hear the word integrity, the first thing they think are the character traits. And it is those 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 things are encompassed in it. But it's so much more than that. So integrity, what, the, the best definition that I've, I've found for it is is the nautical term. So when in the in the nautical world, let's say a shipping a shipping business is shipping cargo from one spot in the world to the next spot in the world. It goes through an inspection. And what they're inspecting is the integrity of that vessel. And the big question that they have is, is it going to make the journey? Is it going to take this cargo from point A to point B? And when I look at a business, that's how I inspect it for integrity. Number one, is there a clear plan of where is this business headed? And number two is, do they have everything in place to get there effectively? Like one of the things you don't think about with the shipping container is if, if the cargo is loaded wrong, when they're offloading cargo, it's going to capsize because it's not balanced. It's not, it's not, it, it's, it just, so those are all the mm-hmm. things that go into the definition of integrity for me. It's things like gauging the hull. Is the hull solid? Is it going to, is it going to withstand the pressure coming against it? Uh, you know, so that's where integrity and enterprise means an undertaking worth, a challenge worth undertaking. And so when you add that together, we're, we're looking at, are you going from A to B? And is this going to create value? Is this going to create change? Is this going to create what you really say you want it to create? Or are you just playing around? <laughs> Jesse is no joke. <laughs> That's I love it. You know, I, I love it. You know, when, when we think of integrity, that I think the first thing that we think about is like, you know, are they going are they are they going to, you know, stand behind what they say, right? That's like the but you bring in this whole nautical thing into it. There's so many different facets of integrity that you just blew my mind with, honestly. You know, it, it, it's amazing. It's a, it's amazing how you sort of shed light on. Listen, it's not just it's not just uh, keeping to your word, right? It's <laughs> is this business going to last? And there's so many different ways that it could fail. Like I didn't even think the if you if you if you pack the ship incorrectly that it could that it could flip over. I mean, it, it's just it it's not something that we think about. Right. And and I think that that is a great example, because when we get into business, there's all types of different verticals in your business that you may not be thinking about, you know, like processes and systems or branding or marketing or, you know, account accounting. Right. So there's all these different these levels. So I want to get into the meat and potatoes of today's show. And and I think we can tie this up around the, the backstory of your name of Integrity Enterprises is, you know, what's the one thing that's really pissing you off uh, in in the marketplace uh, currently? Dude, it's I'm going to sum it up in one word. It's focus. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to add some layers to that. It's focus on the wrong things. Everybody's looking to build these incredible leverage pieces, but they have no connection with the end user. And the problem with that is any leverage piece you build that doesn't cause an effect in the end user is going to kill your long-term potential for your business. It's that plain and simple. They're focusing on the wrong things. They don't want to have actual conversations. They just want to build things that make them money while they sleep. And while that's great, you don't get there by not creating change in people's lives. If you don't create value in, in what you offer, it's, it's, it's worthless. It's worthless. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of their time. And it's going to kill your name in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Focus it. And, and so what should people be focusing in on? No, creating value for the end user. It, and where, where you really understand that is when you focus on the effect that you create in their business. Okay. If you don't okay. look at that piece, if you don't monitor that piece, you're, you're literally tripping over millions of dollars because when you can tie everything you do in a way, tie it together in a way that creates a better result for the end user, you create value and you get to charge what you want in the marketplace. And ultimately, the other piece of focus that they don't that they don't look at is they're just active. 
They're not looking at where they create the most value. And you really do that by looking at margin. You know, how, where do you create margin for people? So, you know, I know a lot of people that have a hundred offerings. I was in a business this morning that has 1.5 million SKUs, 1.5 million options of things that they can sell to people. Uh, they're not looking at profitability on any piece. They're right. just so caught up in the in the wide piece of it that they're not they're not monitoring where they create the most value. I see it every day. People are just looking for activity. They think revenue is the goal, and revenue is not the goal. Profitability is the goal, and you measure you measure the impact that you create by looking at the profitability your business creates. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very frank with the audience. If your business is not profitable, if it's not creating profit for you, it's not as valuable as you think it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, why are we in business in the first place, right? You know, it, it's to it's to make money and and to take that money and reinvest it into things that we want, whether we grow the business more or we take it and we take that money and we support our family with it. Whatever you want to do with it is up to you, right? But at the end of the day, if the business isn't profitable, you don't have a business. And so that is fantastic. And you talked about going wide versus going uh, narrow. And I kind of want to get into that a little bit because I think the key to branding is staying narrow and not trying to be everything to everyone and 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 spreading yourself too thin. So could we discuss maybe one or two different things that our clients should be focusing in on other than just providing value, but like let's go inside their business, for example. And you feel free to use an example of a client that you are working with currently or have worked in the past. Um, to kind of share the example. Sure. So I, I have a client in the construction industry right now, and he he's in that spot where it's early stage and he's taken everything that's coming his way, but he has no voice, no identity, no position in, in the marketplace. And the problem with just it, I, the real answer to me is you do both. You build a wide business, but you go very deep with it as well. But it has to be strategic or else the wide piece doesn't make sense. And the the way that you go wide is you understand your ideal client, you understand the things that they want, and you compete you compete on price and the things that they want because that gets them in the door. That helps them understand that you do create value, that you do you do create significance, and that your you have integrity in that transaction. And from there, the cool thing is you can build your infrastructure off of the wide piece. You can you can offset your cost off of the wide piece in a lot of ways. And those those become uh, self-liquidating offers or or a lead magnet or, or, you know, something that gives you the ability after you've contributed to somebody to say, hey, I think there's more opportunity here. I think there's more value. I know that there's more value I can create for you. I just think you might be focused, uh, you know, a little bit differently. Let me sh- let me present this to you. Let's take a look at it, and if it makes sense, we can move forward with it. But very few businesses do that well. They're just they're just chasing their tail, going wide, and they don't build the vertical piece on it. Mm. <sighs> That's powerful. I I could go a thousand different ways with this, um, but let me let me see if I could pick one that that I want to fo- that I want to kind of go down that rabbit hole with. So what I what I've been noticing too in the when I start working with clients is that they they are focusing in on the wrong things like you know they're so focused in on you know vanity metrics per se like you know likes and follows and 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 that versus the stuff that actually matters like you said like margin and revenue and profit and so you know what kind of what kind of advice would you give, um, you know, a business owner that's e- either started out or five, six years into the game when it comes to reevaluating um, maybe like trimming off the fat? Like how would they be able to trim off some fat and how what's the process to kind of go through? I think this is a good question. You know, what's the process that they could go through to kind of see where they can get rid of some of that dead weight and focus on some stuff that actually matters. I'll I'll give you two real quick ways. The first one revolves around the frustration that we talked about. Get genuinely interested in your end user and spend time with them, connect with them, 
have conversations, ask them how their business is doing, ask them how their product or service is doing in the marketplace, because then that, that really builds that, that effect piece. Yeah. What is, what your, what have your resources created for them? Mm-hmm. And answering that question is incredibly valuable because if it's contr- contributed nothing to them, you need to work on your product line. You need right. to work on your service line so that you can correct that because ultimately what they what they're buying anything from you for is a result in their personal lives. So that's the first piece. The second piece is you, you need to do costing, job costing. You need to look at every individual action that you take and look at the result of profitability in it. And what you'll typically find is that what your ideal clients care about are the most profitable pieces in your business, the most profitable actions in your business. Mm. So if you don't have that piece figured out, there's a lot of dots to connect there, but I, I, I guarantee you it is worth it. It's worth the focus. It's worth the investment of your time. Mm. So that's what you do with your business is you actually go into businesses and you help them sort of connect the dots, if you will. Yep. Awesome. 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 I love it. No, I love it. And so that's the key guys. I want you guys to kind of hammer that home. One of the big key things that he said was actually understanding who your customer is and being what he said. Also, I'm quoting him genuinely concerned, you know, at the end of the day, guys, like you can be the the prettiest girl, the prettiest guy, you can have the awesomest personality, you can have a great business, whatever. However, people will know within five minutes of meeting you whether or not you truly care about them. And what I think Jesse's talking about here, correct me if I'm wrong, my man, is the more that you show them you care, the more they're going to be willing to talk to you, sort of let you in, and then allow you to do what you do best, which is like he said, provide value to them. That's not just fluff. That's just not airy. Like, you know, it's not something that's like high level. I mean, deep stuff. I mean, you'll have business for days and years if you just follow that simple principle. And I think the next thing that he said was when I comes to when it comes to trimming off the fat is looking at your services or products that are selling way better than products that aren't and mix them and just focus in on it. And it reminded me, as you were talking, it reminded me of the the 80, 20 principle, right? Like, you know, you want to focus, you know, uh, 80% or (laughs) I don't want to screw this up, but typically it's 20% of your customers bring you 80% of your, of your revenue. So focusing in on that sort of stuff is what's really going to help drive you. And, I, you know, Jesse has helped me out earlier this year as well. Um, he actually, I have to give credit where credit's due. If it wasn't for Jesse, the brand accelerator program would have never existed. So as Jesse and I, and I, I, if you don't mind, I want to share this story. So Jesse came into my business um, because as I was helping him build his brand, I said, Jess, I really want to immerse myself into yours so I can get a good feel of what it is that you actually execute. And so that's what we did. And so as he was sort of unraveling uh, my business in front of my eyes, which was a great exercise, um, we realized that if I wanted to get to the revenues that I wanted to get to per month, that there needed to be some sort of service that would provide a, 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 a just a tremendous amount of value, so that the ticket, the 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 cost of it would be uh, obviously justified, and then it would move the needle, you know, during the month when it came to generating revenue. And so when he said we need a program. And I was like, holy, like, th- here we go. Here's the aha moment. And so I st- I went back to my team based on the information that Jesse gave us. And I said, this is something that we need to build out immediately. So we build out the brand accelerator program, which was a six week intensive program that we send our clients through that if they want to either rebrand re- or, or start from scratch and really invest 
that's the program that's going to get them the best result, the fastest result um, possible. And so now on average, I'm selling two to three. My goal is 10, but two to three brand accelerator programs a month. Well, that's a big chunk of revenue that sort of moves the needle. So Jess, I want to just give you a huge shout out again. You know, if it wasn't for you giving us and giving me that 30,000 foot view of what was missing inside my business, I'd still be selling like the two, $3,000 programs and I would have to sell 50 of them to get to where I wanted, where now I only have to sell 10. And guys, if you're listening closely, that's how you grow your brand and grow your business. I can probably put a, a 150,000 on it right now that 99.9% of you would rather work with less people, make more money, do less work, make more money than work with a gazillion people to make the same amount. So Jess, we're just about to wrap up. If there's one piece of advice that you can give the audience, you just dropped bomb after bomb today. But if there's one piece that you want people to remember Integrity Enterprises for, Jesse Miller for, that's going to help them take their business to the next level, what would that one piece of advice be? Uh, it's real simple. Build your business for your ideal client and nothing else. Get yourself out of the way. Get your thoughts and ideas out of the way. Build your business for your ideal client. Boom. See, the market determines what it is that you sell, not you. <laughs> so my man, I can talk for another hour and a half about this stuff. You know how crazy I get. But I want to I just want to thank you again for making yourself available. And that's one thing about Jesse. You know, this guy gets it done. You know, when we were building his brand and we were asking for for things for like collateral that we needed to 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 build certain things. I mean, this guy had it done the next day. And so I knew how committed he was to not only his brand and his business, but that obviously is going to showcase how he treats his clients. And so use Jesse Miller as a great example of how great businesses are built and what it takes to generate a great client base, you know, for your business. So Jess, appreciate you, man. Look forward to 2018 with you Thank and you know, just continuing to, to, to crush it um, with both our businesses. So thanks again, my man. Thank you, man. I appreciate the opportunity. And there you have it, guys. Another episode in the books. Just some housekeeping stuff real quick. If you haven't joined the Brand Doctors Hangout Facebook group yet on Facebook, go ahead and check that out. Just go to Facebook, go into the search query, type in the Brand Doctors Hangout. Come hang out with me and Jesse on a daily basis. We're constantly in there providing a bunch of value. And then last but not least, if you haven't shared this podcast with a friend or a colleague yet, please go ahead and do that. I truly appreciate all the support and feedback that I've gotten thus far with it. And uh, if it wasn't for you guys, this podcast would not exist. So appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you on the next episode. You've been listening to the Brand Doctor Podcast with Henry Kaminsky Jr. To get your appointment with the doctor, visit Brand Audit at www.uniquedesigns.net.